Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex or Nuz, Nuz here, and today's video is going to be about increasing your DPS on RuneScape 3, but this video is going to focus on universal upgrades that can be used for all styles. So basically, the guide is going to differ from most of my other ones, as this will focus on things that you can use no matter what your preferred combat style. I always get asked, what if I melee? Or what if I mage? What should I do? So I thought I'd make this video so you can have a ton of universal options to increase your DPS and get better at PVM on RuneScape 3. And keep in mind, some of these upgrades are expensive, some are cheap or even free. You may know some of these and others you might not. They all differ, but are all around great. And if you want to get better at PVM and progress your account, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss a thing. All right, so the first way to raise your DPS is to use adrenaline potions. Now these are a must have for every single style, but they come in a variety of different forms, which is where this gets interesting. We have the normal adrenaline potion requiring 84 herbler and restoring 25% of adrenaline per dose instantly. Then we have the super adrenaline potion which does the same but requires level 87 herbler and restores 30% adrenaline per dose instantly. And finally the adrenaline renewal potion which restores 40% of your adrenaline but it restores this over 6 seconds and requires 115 herbler. Now this is the adrenaline potion that I use for all high level PVM and it's definitely the best one. But even if you can't get the 115 adrenaline renewal, making sure you have any sort of adrenaline potion to use immediately after you use an ultimate is extremely important to PVM and having a good DPS rotation. So next we have the Igneous Call Capes, which can be obtained by using an Igneous Stone from Normal Mode, Deathless Zuck Runs, and using it on your Fight Kiln Capes for each style. Now these capes have a plus 43 style bonus for the corresponding style, and each of them has a special effect. The melee cape reduces the adrenaline cost of overpower to 60%, and causes the ability to hit the target twice, which is a much needed buff to overpower, as before it wasn't very powerful at all. Now the Magic Cape reduces the adrenaline cost of Omni Power to 60% and causes the ability to hit the target four times. Each hit deals 90 to 180% ability damage. This is extremely powerful and a must get upgrade for Mage, as this acts kind of like a mini Greater Ricochet and is a much needed adrenaline dump for the Magic style. So finally, we have the ranged version of the Cape, which reduces the adrenaline cost of Deadshot to 60% and causes it to deal 42 to 210% of the initial damage plus 70% ability damage every 1.2 seconds over the next 8.4 seconds. This makes Deadshot way more viable, and it's super powerful at places like Nex where there are damage caps like on the last phase. So the next DPS increase is the Reaver's Ring. Now the Reaver's Ring is a hybrid ring that costs around 100 million GP as of recording, and it has a plus 27.7 style bonus for every single style, and it gives the Reckless Assault power passive effect, which adds 5% critical strike chance, but reduces accuracy by 5%. This ring is amazing anywhere you have over 100% accuracy, so places like Raksha, Archglacer, Karapak, all types of places like that where you have pretty high accuracy, uh, the minus 5% accuracy will not affect you at all. Now some examples of where this ring wouldn't work well would be Telos and Virago and, and all bosses where your accuracy is poor. So next we have an invention perk. Now I'm not going to go into every single perk because perks are super useful, but I do have a detailed invention guide that I'll link on the screen now if you want to check that out for best in slot perks and for budget perks, but I'm going to focus on one perk here, and that is the flanking four perk. Now this is the most viable for group PVM scenarios, but it can be used in certain niche scenarios for solo encounters where you are able to flank the boss. Now this perk causes certain abilities to lose their stunning ability, but deals increased damage when you flank a creature. Now you can unlock this perk by using the clockwork components, and it's best to put this on an off hand weapon switch. This way you'll switch to this whenever you're using a stun ability in your damage rotation and this can really increase your damage output and can be used in certain solo scenarios like the ambassador when he turns your back to you. But for things like Solok, Raksha duos, Karapak duos, it's extremely extremely good and a very good thing to have in your setup. So next we have things to debuff monsters. Now this includes a vulnerability and smoke cloud. Now vulnerability should honestly be used at all times when bossing for high level PVM, it is extremely, extremely important and worth it. 
Vulnerability increases the damage that the target takes by 10% for one minute, which is just like it sounds, a 10% increase in your damage dealt. You can use vulnerability bombs to be able to vuln the boss with every style, as you can just throw them so it doesn't matter what style you're using. Next we have the Smoke Cloud magic spell requiring the City of Sentizen quest to use. This spell disorients the target, increasing the target's damage received from critical strikes by 50 15% and the damage cap against the target when landing a critical strike is increased by 12% which is also very good. It lasts for 2 minutes. Now the effect is only 40% effective for non-magic damage so if you're using ranged or melee but it is still worth using. Now you can use this with magic just as a debuff and get the full effect but you can also use it with ranged and melee if you have the ingenuity of the human's ability which will allow it to not hit so it won't ever miss so you won't need like a mage swap or anything like that. So next we have the Limitless ability which is unlocked from making or buying a Limitless Codex which uses 2000 vital sparks and costs around 420 mil to purchase. Now this ability, although quite expensive, is very very good to have no matter what combat style you use. When you activate it, it makes thresholds able to be used only requiring 15% adrenaline instead of the usual 50%. Here is some examples of how this ability can be used via the RuneScape wiki for each combat style. So for example, with Mage, you can Sunshine, Adrenaline Pot, then use your Limitless Sigil, Wild Magic, Asphyxiate, and also Deep Impact all basically in a row. It's also very good to use in a pinch if you need something like devotion or debilitate but you don't have the adrenaline to use it and it can definitely save your life at a lot of places. So next we have the Spirit Cape, Ripper Demon, Spirit Weed Incense Stick, and Spiritual Prayer Potion combination. It seems like a lot but trust me it's really really good. This is basically showing how to use a Ripper Demon to its full potential and increase your DPS with it. So for this this, of course you'll want to start with a Ripper Demon with Death From Above scrolls put in it. This requires 96 summoning and the Ripper Demon gives a passive effect that will increase the damage of the player by 0-5% to scaling with the percentage of the target's lost HP. And the Death From Above scrolls which has the Ripper Demon leap into the air crashing down and striking the opponent dealing 200-320% to damage of their maximum hit. Now the best way to use a Ripper Demon is to have it filled with scrolls and then make sure you right click on your summoning tab and set your auto fire rate to 1. This will make it so that your ripper demon will constantly use its scrolls without you needing to do anything. Now with the use of the spirit cape which is unlocked from dungeoneering for 45k dungeon tokens and it has a passive effect that makes it so the special move for all familiars is permanently reduced by 20%. This means your ripper demon will spend less points to cast its special move and and this is a passive effect, which not many people know, so you don't actually need to wear the spirit cape at all, you just need to have it purchased and in your bank. Now you can also couple this with spiritual prayer potions or summoning potions, which either restore summoning points or prayer and summoning points every time you drink them. And you can drink them to restore prayer, then you're filling up your summoning bar and your ripper demon is dealing more damage. Then you can also use spirit weed incense sticks, which at max potency provides a 40% increased familiar special attack recovery rate, which means you'll spend less money on spiritual prayers. This is such a good combo that can really increase your DPS, and if you don't believe me or you want to try it out, go try out all four of these things for like you know, a few kills at a low level boss that you're comfortable with and watch just how fast you kill it compared to before. It is really, really good. So next we have a similar combination which is a poison dealing combo using the Cinderbane Gloves, Quorum Incense Sticks, and Weapon Poison. Now using Cinderbane Gloves which cost around 85 mil and are a hybrid pair of gloves that have a passive effect that applies poison with a 1 out of 8 chance per hit to targets and increases the base poison damage coefficient which also stacks with Corminson Sticks which Corminson Sticks increase weapon poison damage by 10% at max potency and then of course you'll want to drink and be using the weapon poison plus 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 potion for maximum poison damage. So with all these 
three things combined when fighting any boss that is poisonable, you can deal so much poison damage, it's really crazy. This is very, very good, and if you're not using at least Cinderbane Gloves and Weapon Poison uh, at all the bosses that can be poisoned, then you really should start because you're missing out on a ton of free damage because like the Ripper Demon, the passive damage is very, very good, and Cinderbane should basically always be used at any boss that can be poisoned, they're just that powerful. Finally, we have Archaeology Relics, which are passive buffs to your DPS for any style. Now, the most optimal setup that I use is the Fury of the Small Relic, which requires level 97 Archaeology, and when used, your basic abilities will generate plus 1% more adrenaline, which doesn't sound like much, but trust me, it adds up and is very powerful. And then you have the Berserker's Fury Relic, which requires level 56 Archaeology, and when that's used, players will deal up to 5.5% more damage with all styles, the lower their current life points are beneath their maximum level. So this is basically a flat boost of damage depending on how low or high your life points are. So if you ever wonder why elite PVMers tend to sit at super low HP a lot of the time, this is the one of many reasons why. And then you can also throw on the font of life for more life points or death word in your last slot if you have the increased monolith power for more damage reduction. And that's it. Those are all the methods for increasing your DPS for every style, but I do have some honorable mentions that I've covered a lot of them before, so I didn't want to just repeat them in this video, but I will mention them in case you don't know about them, and that's the Essence of Finality, which is an amulet that's basically a Reaper amulet and an amulet of souls combined into one, but you can also store a special attack in it, and it's extremely important for PVMing, at least for high-level PVM, and it can be used to store a spec for mage, ranged, or melee, and and that spec is then be able to be casted uh, using the damage and accuracy of the weapon you're currently using, which makes it very good for DPSing because if you use like a dragon dagger spec, you're getting the accuracy and damage of a, you know, Zeros God Sword if that's what you have instead of a level 60 dagger. So not to mention the best in slot style bonus for the Essence of Finality as well is very, very good. And then finally, we have the Scripture of Wen, which is a very good pocket slot item. And although not the absolute best pocket slot item, it's pretty high up there and it's much cheaper to use than say the grimoire. Now I have a video on pocket slot items that I'll link in the description as well in case you're interested. So I hope these methods helped you all out. If they did, a like would be super appreciated. And if you want more videos like this for increasing your DPS, help with PVM, uh, all that sort of stuff, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one. As of course, if you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and every single link to these items will be put in the description so you can go look at more info about them if you'd like. <laughs>